Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, and welcome once again to The Robert E. Howard Show. The Robert E. Howard Show, where today we are going to be talking about Cull, Robert E. Howard's Cull. So Cull is actually one of Robert E. Howard's more popular characters. Uh, very often, Cull is considered as a kind of prototype for Conan the Barbarian, uh, Robert E. Howard's most popular character. In a lot of ways, Cull kind of is a prototype for Conan. They're very similar in a lot of ways. But as far as their personalities are concerned, they're actually quite different. And the world that Conan lives in is actually a lot different from the world that Cull lives in. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Cull made his premiere in Weird Tales in August 1929. And he premiered in a story called The Shadow Kingdom, which many consider to be the first sword and sorcery story. I don't know if it is, but many people consider it to be so. I guess it depends on how you uh, define a sword and sorcery story. But if it's not the first sword and sorcery story, it ought to be because it's really, really good, that story. It's, it's one of Robert E. Howard's best stories, The Shadow Kingdom. So a great place uh, for the Cull series to start. All the Conan stories, or excuse me, all the Cull stories are available in this Del Rey volume. This is Cull, Exile of Atlantis. This is a great little volume uh, with illustrations by Justin Sweet. Uh, he does the cover. He does a lot of interior illustrations. And he has a great style, and he seems to have a very good sense uh, for this character and this character's world. Uh, kind of strange and weird illustrations. Uh, some good stuff uh, from Sweet in this volume. It's not a big volume. It's rather slim because there were not a lot of cult stories. And unlike the Solomon Kane stories that came before and the Conan stories that come later, the quality of this of these of these stories uh, it varies quite a bit. They're kind of all over the place as far as quality is concerned, which is not a surprise, because a lot of these stories were not published during Robert E. Howard's lifetime. Only a few cult stories were published during his lifetime. There was the Shadow Kingdom. The Mirrors of Tuzan Thun, The Kings in the Night, which was actually a team-up between Cull and Bran MacMorn, uh, which only happened through magic. And I'll talk about that story when I talk about Bran MacMorn, because it took place in Bran MacMorn's time. And in a lot of ways, it's more of a Bran MacMorn story, I feel. Although Cull was a major part of it, of course. Um, everything else, pretty much, except with the exception of one poem, was not published in his lifetime. And so that's most of this book, really. That said, The Shadow Kingdom was a very popular story. Uh, it had a lot of admirers at that time, H.P. Lovecraft being one. He liked that story a lot. A lot of the cult stories, like he said, were rejected or just never submitted. Kings in the Night... Uh, was one of the more popular stories. By This Axe I Rule actually was a, cul uh, was a cult story that became the first Conan story. So that is the real connection between cult and Conan, was the story By This Axe I Rule, which was rejected by Weird Tales, was reworked and made into a Conan story. So the characters of Conan and Cull are most similar in that one story. Uh, that story was changed quite a bit, though. The Cull version actually did not have any overt supernatural elements other than the setting. Whereas in the Conan story, the supernatural played a major part of that story. So a lot of it was really different. Also, there was a subplot in the Cull story that was cut out entirely. For the best, I think. So kind of a mixed bag, the Cull stories, and we'll get into that. And I don't, you know, I don't blame Robert E. Howard for some of these stories being not great because they were not published in his lifetime. And you cannot 
I don't think, blame an author for stories that aren't great if they were not even published when he was alive and were just kind of taken uh, after his death and then published, which most of this stuff was. And I'm glad it was because there's some good stuff in here uh, in this Cull volume. And like I said, Cull was a very different character from Conan. Conan, he was a much more complex character, I feel like, in a lot of ways. He was a more intelligent character, I think. Cull was no dummy. But Conan was particularly smart. And uh, he had a great tactical mind. And he knew his business uh, backwards and forwards, which was fighting, uh, either individually or in large battles. And... I get the feeling that Conan was a more competent king than Cull was. That said, Cull was no dummy. He managed to make himself king of Volusia by his own hand. Uh, and this, for a barbarian, Cull was from Atlantis. Now, in the pre-cataclysmic age uh, that Cull lived in, Atlantis was a lot different than the Atlantis we think of when we think of it now. Uh, it was a more savage place with primitive tribesmen, and Cull was one of those tribesmen. He had to hightail it out of Atlantis in a hurry. He got himself into a lot of trouble in Atlantis, and he had to get out of there, and he did, and he had a whole series of spectacular adventures uh, that we never get to see, we only hear about. Everything uh, that we read about in the Cull stories, Cull is already king. Uh, so a lot of the trials and tribulations he experienced before he became king, we never actually get to read about that, except for, you know, in hindsight, uh, as they're mentioned here and there. We never get to experience those adventures the way we experience those adventures with Conan. The world was a much darker, stranger, and more shadowy place than the Hyborian age of Conan. Everything seemed a lot less familiar, a lot odder, a lot darker in Cull's world. It had a lot of atmosphere uh, to go along with Cull, who was a brooder, much different than Conan, in that he was a much darker character, a much broodier character, didn't seem to care about women at all, which Conan, he really did. Uh, he just was a dark, broody character, much like the author, Robert E. Howard. Robert E. Howard, I think, put a lot of himself into the character of Cull. I think, that, I think that shows in a lot of these stories, in the character of Cull. And a lot of people prefer the character of Cull because of those very qualities. I don't. Uh, I like Cull an awful lot. I just think that Conan is a better, more rounded character, uh, a more well-rounded character than Cull is. But Cull was interesting in himself, uh, being that brooding, dark character uh, who would go into red rages and black moods. An interesting character to read about. In the Cull stories, we have a lot of recurring characters, which we don't get a lot of that in the, Cull, in the Conan stories. Uh, Brul the Spear Slayer being the most notable recurring character. Brul is a Pict, and the Pict, the Picts are people that uh, we're in a lot of Robert E. Howard stories. They existed from the pre-cataclysmic age through the age of Conan uh, onto uh, our own ancient history. Uh, Bran MacMorn was the king of the Picts. Uh, Bran MacMorn who led the Picts against Rome. So the Picts were around for a while. And it's important to note that Cole's world and Conan's world existed in the same universe. Uh, this just happened a long time before Conan uh, existed. But Brule was an interesting character because Brule's people and Cull's people were hereditary enemies. So they didn't like each other a whole lot when they first met. But through the course of the first story and the following stories, they become trusted friends and they become quite loyal to each other. And their relationship is one of the more interesting things that you'll find in these stories. So that's kind of cool in itself. There are some other recurring characters that are interesting. 
all of these stories are fun. They might not all be winners, but they're all entertaining. Uh, this book has some of Robert E. Howard's best writing in it, uh, along with some stuff that's not so great. Pretty mixed bag. But like I said, I don't blame Robert E. Howard for stories uh, that were not published during his lifetime. I don't think you could ever blame a writer for stories uh, that might not be great that were not even published during that author's lifetime. Cull became more popular uh, during the 1970s, actually, because Conan had become a very popular comic book. And Marvel, who had had such great success with Conan, decided they needed to find another character from Robert E. Howard to publish. They did some Solomon Kane stories, but they did a lot more uh, Cull in their comic books. So they had a uh, call in the black and white magazines, which you could find in this omnibus volume. This is called the Savage. And that's a great cover right there. I like that cover a lot. And this uh, republishes some of the stories from the magazine Cull and the Barbarians, as well as some Cull stories that were in uh, the Savage Sword uh, of Conan. And it has some dynamite art in this volume. Just some great stuff. <laughs> Uh, in this book. The Cull stories, they did well as far as the artwork was concerned. Just really high quality stuff for the most part. So you got the black and white stories in this omnibus. You also have uh, some of the color Conan comic books uh, published in this om omnibus called Cull the Destroyer. There's Thulsa Doom there. Thulsa Doom, whose name you might recognize from the first Conan movie, Thulsa Doom was actually a cult character and a pretty creepy looking one, looking all Skeletor there. And the stories in this volume, again, are really good. Uh, a lot of good quality cult comic books. Not nearly as much cult material was published as Conan. Cull was never as popular as Conan. And we got uh, the third volume here, Conan the Conqueror, which has some later Cull stories. Again, uh, the quality of these stories is really high um, for the most part. Uh, really good art work. John Buscema does some work in here. Really good stuff uh, in these volumes. So if you like comics, yeah, you should seek those out. Those are fun. Now, there are some differences between Marvel's Cull and Robert E. Howard's. Most notably, uh, Marvel's Call seems a lot more interested in the women than Call's, than um, Robert E. Howard's Call did. Robert E. Howard just didn't seem to care all that much at all, which was interesting in itself. Quite a departure uh, from Conan, that's for sure. And then, of course, there was the terrible 1997 film with Kevin Sorbo, with I, which I urge you not to watch because it's so terrible. It's just the worst. So, yeah, don't watch that terrible movie. It bears no relation, relation to the actual call, which you can find in here. This is the real stuff. So, for the next uh, few weeks, I will be talking about some call. Uh, next week, we are going to jump right to the Shadow Kingdom. We'll talk a little bit about uh, his initial appearance in a story that was never published in his lifetime called Exile of Atlantis. And then The Shadow Kingdom, dynamite story, and a great story to start off with, with Cull. Okay, that was your Robert E. Howard's, Howard show for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch me next week. I'll be back here tomorrow. I think I've got a, a, a tag to do tomorrow. Yeah, we actually have a tag for Tuesday. So I will see you then.